Hi Denver, this is Jeremy with The Cooler Company, coming to you today from our Westminster location. And I'm going to be going over how to start up your Breeze Air EXV series evaporative cooler. Um, if The Cooler Company put it in, it's going to look a lot like this in the spring. You're going to have your cover on, your drain line will be in place, your water line is already there. Now, today I'm lucky I don't have to work on a ladder so much, so I'm just going to undo the cover. It's very easy with these little toggle strings. You just pull the white plastic center down and it will release the strings. And there's two, one on each opposite corner. So once those are loosened, you can simply remove the cover and fold it up put that in a good place so you know where it is come the fall. Um, yeah, the EXV cooler, of course you can check our other videos and our website to learn more about it, but it is really the state of the industry as far as swamp cooling goes. Um, so next will be to open up the cooler. And of course, make sure your ladder is set up safely, you don't want anyone getting hurt. And as always, if you're not comfortable doing this, please give us a call. We're more than happy to come out and take care of it for you. Um, so there are two door clips, one on each corner for a total of four per door. And you just simply remove the whole door panel. At this time, it's good to check the condition of your pad. You're looking for any tears, any breaks, any delamination, any heavy scale buildup, dirt. Um, and also cottonwood accumulation. And if you have an issue with cottonwood accumulation, please give our office a call. We have a perfect product that can take care of that for you. Um, but remove the door, and you can set it on the roof. I'm going to set it on the ground because it's so close today. And if the cooler company winterized your cooler, all of the components that you're going to need to hook it up will be inside the cooler. If you did it yourself, Hopefully you know where those are. And when I talk about the components inside the cooler, they are from the ground up. We have the adapter for your water spigot. And, and this may vary depending on when yours was installed. Um, there are also, on our new ones, there will be a flex line adapter just to make it easier for you to hook up your garden hose and work around the copper water line as needed. Up inside the unit, you will find the the drain spud for adapting to your, your cooler drain, the solenoid valve, this allows the water to come into the unit, the cover for the solenoid valve, this goes on after it's connected, but I'm going to go over all this again. There is an adapter that connects from the copper water line to the solenoid, and up inside the unit, the drain valve. So since I'm already up here, I'm going to start with the drain valve. Um, if you can see, it is keyed. Um, it's most of a circle, and then there is a slot cut on one side. That is to ensure that you can only put it in the correct way. Um, there is an O-ring that sits around here and creates the watertight seal. Make sure that that is in place. Um, press it into the cooler, and with the lock nut, Just spin this on. And hand tight is typically fine. If you have some pliers and you want to give it just a little snug, that's perfect as well. And then coming out of the drain valve, there are these two pieces. The drain funnel, or what I call the spud, and then the lock nut for it. Very easy to put together. You just drop the spud into that, push the spud into the drain line, and then hand tighten it to the threads on the bottom of the drain valve. You don't have to put pliers on this. Um, this does not hold water pressure or anything like that. It's just a connection for the water to go down the drain. So if it's only hand tight, that's perfect. Um, next from there, you'll probably see these wires hanging from under the cooler. 
those are going to connect to a very crucial piece, the solenoid valve. Um, this is a directional component. On the bottom of it, there's a white strainer, and on the side, there's an arrow. The arrow points up, and this is very, very crucial if you're doing it yourself. If you put it in backwards, it will cool just fine, but then when the cooler is off and it drains, you will continually have water running out of your drain. If that is the case, turn off your water and check your solenoid. It's probably in upside down. I see this a lot. Um, this connects very easily to the bottom of the cooler. It's a hose type connection with a washer inside of it. Um, make sure that the rubber washer is in there. If not, an inexpensive hose washer will replace it just fine. Get that in there nice and tight. Um, it's a good idea to snug it up with a pair of pliers just to make sure that it's on there well. And then at this point, I like to connect the wires for the solenoid valve. Um, it does not matter which one goes to which. Like that. And then the rain cover for it will line up with the hole in the bottom. And you'll hear it kind of click up those threads. And then your solenoid valve is in place. Then you need to take your flex adapter. And again, it's just a hose type connection. Get it hand tight, just a little snug with pliers, it's perfect. Um, as long as the washers are intact, you do, not, you do not need any Teflon tape or any type of a thread compound to make a watertight seal. Um, so from there, it all starts to just go together. So on the bottom of this, there is a quarter inch connection that connects to our quarter inch water line. Of course, you want to have uh, two wrenches or two sets of pliers, one to hold the good brass and another to tighten up the water line for a good connection. Um, and right now, that is all the connections for up top on the cooler. At this point in time, you'll want to get back down off the ladder and work your way over to the water supply. Now for our demo here, this is our water supply. They might vary depending on uh, what your house is, but pretty much it's going to be the outdoor spigot. And we highly recommend that you run your water line outside. If you run it through the attic and it doesn't get bled properly, it can freeze and you'll find, uh, you'll find the leak when water is dripping out of your ceiling. Not, not the ideal way. Um, so you take your faucet. In this case, we are using a splitter. Um, makes it very easy for you to hook up your hose for watering the grass or the garden, um, and also have a, a dedicated feed for the cooler itself. Um, from that hose connection, we then hook up another flexible line. And this just makes it easier if you need to move your garden hose and it bumps anything, it's, it's not going to loosen the water connection. Next from that will be the adapter fitting to go from the hose connection to the quarter inch water line. And there, the water is hooked up. So at this point, you want to just very slowly open up your water spigot. And then this way you can check to make sure that your first connection is nice and tight. And I don't have any drips. So now I'm going to open the feed to the cooler. And again, you want to check all of your connections and make sure that there were no freeze breaks and that everything is drip free. Um, and that's another benefit, like I said, of having a water line outside. If you do have a freeze break, you're going to see water spraying off the roof instead of spraying down through your light fixtures. Um, so yeah, I always like to, once the water's hooked up, just kind of feel the water line, make sure there's no little cracks I'm missing, and all that is good. All of our connections up here, they're all watertight. So now at this point, 
we will talk more about turning the unit on. All right, now for turning on the power to the unit and syncing up your remote control. If you left the batteries in all through the winter, you definitely want to take them out at this point in time. Um, after you take the batteries out, if you still have a display, just continually hit the power button until it goes blank. And this is very crucial to properly sync the connection between the wireless controller and the antenna for the unit. Um, so, I always will take this up on the roof with me with three AAA batteries. And you should have some fresh ones. So now what I do is you power the unit on. And once it's on, you will see the LED lights will illuminate. Um, now very important here, you have to have it on at least five seconds and a maximum of five minutes before you put the batteries into the remote. So then the batteries go into the remote, and put the cover on. At this point you'll notice that it is still blank, but you'll see ID and then a little circle and then the clock will pop up. Now just to make sure that they are actually synced, I'm going to turn it on for a moment and I see that the fan starts to spin so we know that they are synced. Now because it's been off or you just took the batteries out, the clock is just going to be saying 12 a.m. Um, I'm going to show you really quick how to change the time on that. So over here on the, the bottom of the remote, there's a, a button labeled Pro for program. You just simply press and hold that until the hour starts to blink. And then you can set that to whatever time it is, um, the hour, and whether it's AM or PM. You press and release again. You can set the minutes. Press and release again and your time is locked in. So now your remote is all set up, it's on the right time. So if you're running it on the time to program, it's gonna work with your schedule, very important. Um, so let's see here, if, if we put in your cooler, you might have installed with it um, the Breeze Air Winter Damper. So at this point, I wanted to highlight what it looks like when it's closed and locked in place. This little black, or sorry, this little white plastic horseshoe looking thing is actually the lock. And so when I try to pull up on the damper arm, you'll see it does not budge. But it's very simple to release. You just pull it around like that, and now it can swing freely. Now this is a feature that you can only get through the cooler company. We have a very good working relationship with Breeze Air. Um, they have visited our sheet metal fabrication plant several times, and they saw how we make our our um, curbs, the, the curb that the, the unit sits on, the sheet metal box, and we make them to the exact specifications that Breeze Air likes. And so they allow us to install these winter dampers. No one else, um, definitely in the Denver region, in the Rocky region, I mean I don't think anyone on the East Coast can even get these, or the West Coast. Um, far as I know, only the Breeze Air only Breeze Air lets us have them. Okay, so now we've released the damper, we sync the remote, we've hooked up the power and the water. Um, now we're going to test it out. So first I will test it just in the vent mode. So when you turn it on, um, right now mine says manual and vent. This is just so I can test all of the fan speeds. All ten of the fan speeds. So as you turn it up, the fan should increase, um, you know, by virtue of our display. I have a duct right here so I can feel the airflow, but you will also hear it up in the unit. And conversely, if you turn it down, it should also get quieter and slower. And when it turns off, it should stop, the damper should close. Now I'm going to test out all of our components for cooling. So I'm going to once again hit power, but this time I'm going to select cool. And so right now our drain, our power drain just closed. 
and our solenoid valve just got energized. So now the cooler is going to fill with water. Okay, so the, the unit has filled. The water got high enough that the water sensors detected the water. And then 30 seconds later, they turned on the pump. Now you can see here, because our pads are dry, that they soaked up that water. And right now, it's waiting for more water to fill up before it turns back on. Now this is a benefit to you because you're going to get cold air. Um, the other benefit is the pump is never going to run itself dry and burn itself out. I'm put some more in there. Right on cue, enough water filled up, the pump turned back on. And now you can really see some of the other benefits of this cooler. And instead of just a couple tubes to feed your pads, you can see the big wide distribution tray up here. And now it has dozens and dozens of water channels just to ensure that this pad gets completely saturated and you get the most cold air in your house with the least amount of water. So at this point, too, I also like to test out the drain valve. Um, we verified that the cooling is working, that the pump is working fine. I'm just checking the fan one more time. And now I'm just going to turn it off. And I'm going to hit the drain button. So to test, to test the drain valve, it's very simple. You can do this while the cooler is running or like I have it off right now. Um, on your remote, you just hit the drain button. The word drain, drain tank should come up. And then all the water is going to neatly drain into the gutter instead of draining down your roof and staining it. And unlike conventional coolers that could hold up to 30 gallons of water, this one operates on three to four gallons. Very little water. It drains itself very quickly. I mean, we're, we're talking under 30 seconds here, and it's just about done draining. Uh, benefit of that is you don't have foul water that turns into the air that you're breathing. Uh, the breeze air unit utilizes a sensor. Uh, that's how it knows when it's filled, and that's also how it knows when it's time to dump the water. And that sensor it can be removed. It's right here. This is the sensor. Um, you'll see when you take the door off, there's a nice sticker there. It says, clean the probes now. So if there's any scale on your probes, um, you could take something not too abrasive, but you want to get the scale off. And you know, you want, you want these to be metal on the outside, not covered in crust, anything like that. You don't have to sand them down, um, but just as long as they can sense the water. Because this is very important. Um, if ever the sensor is very, very dirty, it will never turn on the pump because it doesn't know that there's water in it. Um, so yeah, clean that as well. And that is pretty much it. You can put the, put the doors back on, put your clips in place, and start cooling. Thank you for your time.